from this, some sunlight on what a special counsel does. But you can't just get the attorney general to sit in front of a congressional panel and answer questions about what the special counsel does. There's an independence there. Yeah, and I'm curious, you know, the last time uh, the, the, the Mueller uh, special uh, counsel, Trump was in office. And I'm curious, do you think that there is any um, advantage to being a sitting president when, when you are being investigated mm -hmm. versus when you are in the running, so to speak, uh, or a private citizen, so to speak, uh, with this kind of, of investigation before you? So... I'll, I'll take that one for a moment. I mean, the answer should be that, and I thought Scott's answer was so important in the sense that the Biden White House might have been caught off guard or taken by surprise. Mm -hmm. Because the Department of Justice is supposed to be independent, of course the Attorney General is a political appointee, is appointed by the President, but the Department of Justice is not supposed to be the President's personal law firm. Mm -hmm. The Department of Justice is exactly what it sounds like, and it's supposed to serve us and uphold the federal law and enforce the federal law. And so when it comes to these decisions about, for instance, whether or not there should be a special counsel or whether or not there should be charges brought at all, President Biden has been clear about this. Merrick Garland has been clear about this. This should not be a political decision and there should not be consultation with political leaders. This should be a matter of looking at a federal statute and saying, here are the words of the federal statute, here are the facts as we have investigated them, and we think that we can prove beyond a reasonable doubt that there was a violation of this federal statute, or we don't think we can. But to your question about, you know, what if you're in office or what if you're out of office and a private citizen and running for office, the answer is, the same in the sense that all of those decisions that either the Department of Justice makes or in this case that a special counsel will be making should be made separate and apart from President Trump's status as a current president, as a former president, as a current candidate. Now, obviously, there are certain issues, legal issues brought up by the fact that President Trump was in office. There are certain executive privileges that attach. But an assessment about whether or not to move forward, it shouldn't matter. This is our old saying, no person is above the law. All right, let's bring into this conversation Rebecca Royfe, CBS News legal analyst. Um, Rebecca, first of all, your reaction to this news, this is something that we had heard about as a possibility, and now we are expecting that announcement here just minutes away. Well, first of all, I think it's a signal that the investigation is moving forward and there's some consideration, um, or at least the thought that there will be some consideration about whether or not to bring charges. That's obviously um, the difficult call to make. I think Jessica is entirely right that the process needs to be insulated as best as possible from political influence. We saw with uh, special counsel Robert Mueller that the former president indeed attacked him, even though he was a special counsel, even though he had um, ties to the Republican Party um, as a you know Democrat who had, was after him for you know partisan reasons. And so to the extent that this helps in conveying the notion that this is not a political process, that the law is being considered in light of the facts, then I think it's a good move. How effective it is with um, you know a core set of the former president's supporters, um, I'm not sure that it will actually help because I think he will discredit this no matter who is involved and no matter how um, legitimate the investigation is. All right, we are expecting that announcement for our viewers who may just be joining us from Attorney General Merrick Garland at any moment. There you see the Justice Department where the podium is set up in anticipation of that announcement. And Rebecca, while we wait for the Attorney General, um, I wanted to ask you as well, what are the factors that a Merrick Garland would have to consider in making a decision like this to appoint a special counsel given how politicized the environment is right now? 
So the attorney general's um, discretion to appoint a special counsel in a case like this is broad. If he perceives that there could be a conflict of interest or a at least the perception, a strong perception of a conflict of interest, he is allowed to appoint a special counsel. So I think given his broad discretion, what's really at issue is why did he um, choose to exercise that discretion and was it a good move? And I think that the answer to that is he decided to do it to try to convey to the American people that this is not political, even though he is not a political actor, he is obviously chosen by the president and therefore there's some indication, some connection there. And this further insulates the uh, investigation and you know, if it were to turn into a prosecution from allegations that this was the politically motivated choice of a political rival. I'm curious, um, is there any um, any word now, as, the, as this word goes out, um, what response uh, the former president might have? I'm, I'm truly curious yeah, I asked to, Scott to hear. That. Yeah, I asked Scott that, if there was any reaction yet at all, um, including from the former president. I think the answer is we don't know yet. Obviously, we are waiting that announcement, but Scott was anticipating, as he pointed out, just yeah. a deluge of reaction, including from uh, the former president. Um, so we'll wait to see. He also, um, Rebecca, mentioned that he would not anticipate Merrick Garland answering any questions at a, an announcement like this. Would you anticipate the same thing, given the sensitivities surrounding this? Yes, I imagine he won't. And and to address your your first point, I think you know one of the key factors in terms of the president's the former president's reaction is going to be who they appoint as special counsel. Mm -hmm. Because I think mm -hmm. we know from the past that what he does is personalize these things, mm -hmm. and that's his way of undermining the effort. It's to find the person, find weaknesses that the person might have, hone in on those weaknesses, and even if that person has no weaknesses, to invent some. Um, and publicize them. So I think, you know, what I'm really looking for is who will um, Merrick Garland pick and whether he's going to announce that now, because it does seem to me to be very significant. And I think that choice ought to be somebody who has strong ties to the Republican Party. So it makes it harder. Now, as we know, as I was just saying before, it doesn't make it impossible because President Trump, former President Trump, is always going to go after that person, even if they've got all of the credentials and all of the connections that would indicate that as a personal matter, as a general matter, they would be inclined not to, um, you know, not to seek to undermine the president, the former president's campaign or, um, you know, do him in in any way. But I think the problem is that, you know, no matter how hard they try, it's going to be very difficult to find somebody who had who's sort of. Um, you know, ha is it has some kind of immunity from that because, as we've seen, nobody really does. Yeah, we're at least a thick skin. Yeah, absolutely, yes. <laughs> absolutely. All right, we see someone there. Perhaps that was our two-minute warning. I don't know, control room. You can let us know. But um, in the interim, uh, very quickly, then um, let me ask you, Jessica, to Rebecca's point: What are those qualities um, that may be uh, necessary in order to take this job as special counsel? Well, first of all, I totally agree with everything Rebecca said in the sense that this is somebody where conventional wisdom would say it would be really hard for Republicans and the former president to criticize uh, this person if, in fact, they're a Democrat or a Democratic activist in any way. So you want to look for somebody with some ties to the Republican Party or the Republican establishment. Having said that, it's exactly what Rebecca also said, oh, which is Rebecca. former president... Will Rebecca and Jessica, thank you. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there. We want to take you now to a CBS News special report. This is a CBS News special report. Hello, everyone. I'm Major Garrett in Washington. We are coming on the air to share a significant development into the ongoing federal investigations against former President Donald Trump. Attorney General Merrick Garland will appoint a special counsel to oversee the Justice Department's multiple investigations involving the former president. The special counsel will oversee both the case involving classified documents found at Trump's Mar-a-Lago home and the separate probe involving the January 6th insurrection and Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election. This announcement comes just three days after Trump launched his 2024 candidacy for the White House. The special counsel to be appointed is named Jack Smith, 
who began his career in the Department of Justice as an assistant DA in New York County. He is currently the chief prosecutor for the special counsel in The Hague, which investigates and prosecutes war crimes. We have a camera, as you can see, at the Justice Department awaiting the arrival of the Attorney General. Our senior investigative correspondent, Catherine Herridge, is with me at the table. Catherine, for as many seconds as we might have before the Attorney General makes his appearance, what is the significance of the appointment of a special counsel? Well, a special counsel is brought in by the Justice Department when they feel the standard or routine handling of a criminal investigation might present or have the perception of a conflict of interest. In this particular case, I've spoken with two former attorneys for former President Trump. They believe it's an indicator that the department may have sufficient evidence to bring criminal charges. And we will find out about that here now. The Attorney General of the United States, Merrick Garland. Good afternoon. I'm here today to announce the appointment of a special counsel in connection with two ongoing criminal investigations that have received significant public attention. The first, as this or entity unlawfully interfered with the transfer of power following the 2020 presidential election or the certification of the Electoral College vote held on or about January 6, 2021. The second is the ongoing investigation involving classified documents and other presidential records, as well as the possible obstruction of that investigation referenced and described in court filings in a pending matter in the Southern District of Florida. I'm joined today by Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco, U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia, Matthew Graves, and Assistant Attorney General for the Criminal Division, Kenneth Polite. Assistant Attorney General for National Security, Matthew Olson, could not be here. He is currently in Germany, representing the department at the G7 Home Affairs and Security Ministerial. U.S. Attorney Graves has been ably leading the investigations into the events leading up to and on January 6. He and dozens of assistant U.S. attorneys and other prosecutors have taken on the monumental task of conducting over 900 prosecutions in defense of our democratic institutions. Criminal Division prosecutors under the able leadership of Assistant Attorney General Polite have played a significant role in those prosecutions. Assistant Attorney General Olson has been ably leading the team responsible for investigating the matter, involving classified documents and other presidential records, as well as the possible obstruction of that investigation. All of the career prosecutors assigned to these matters are conducting their work in the best traditions of the Department of Justice. I also want to recognize the efforts of the many FBI agents and other law enforcement personnel who are assigned to these matters. They are working courageously and steadfastly and are serving our nation honorably. I am grateful to them. We all are. The Department of Justice has long recognized that in certain extraordinary cases, it is in the public interest to appoint a special prosecutor to independently manage an investigation and prosecution. Based on recent developments, including the former president's announcement that he is a candidate for president in the next election and the sitting president's stated intention to be a candidate as well, I have concluded that it is in the public interest to appoint a special counsel. Such an, uh, an appointment underscores the department's commitment to both independence and accountability in particularly sensitive matters. It also allows prosecutors and agents to continue their work expeditiously and to make decisions indisputably guided only by the facts and the law. The special counsel will conduct parts of the first investigation I just mentioned. The investigation into whether any person or entity unlawfully interfered with the transfer of power following the 2020 presidential election or with the certification of the Electoral College vote held on or about January 6. This does not include prosecutions that are currently pending in the District of Columbia or future investigations and prosecutions of individuals for offenses committed while they were physically present on the Capitol grounds on January 6. Those investigations and prosecutions will remain under the authority of the U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia. The special counsel will also conduct the investigation involving classified documents and other presidential records as well as the possible dis 
obstruction of that investigation. Today, I signed an order appointing Jack Smith to serve as special counsel. The order authorizes him to continue the ongoing investigation into both of the matters that I have just described and to prosecute any federal crimes that may arise from those investigations. Mr. Smith is a veteran career prosecutor. He began his prosecutorial career in 1994 as an assistant district attorney with the New York County DA's office. In 1999, he became an assistant U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of New York, where over the course of nine years, he prosecuted matters ranging from gang murders of police officers to civil rights violations. From 2008 to 2010, he served with the International Criminal Court, where he supervised war crimes investigations. In 2010, Mr. Smith returned to the Justice Department to serve as Chief of the Public Integrity Section, where he led a team of more than 30 prosecutors who handled public corruption and election crimes cases across the United States. In 2015, he agreed to serve as the first Assistant U.S. Attorney for the Middle District of Tennessee, later becoming the acting United States Attorney. Most recently, Mr. Smith served as a Chief Prosecutor for the Special Court in The Hague, charged with investigating and adjudicating war crimes in Kosovo. Mr. Smith will begin his work as Special Counsel immediately and will be returning to the United States from The Hague. Throughout his career, Jack Smith has built a reputation as an impartial and determined prosecutor who leads teams with energy and focus to follow the facts wherever they lead. As special counsel, he will exercise independent prosecutorial judgment to decide whether charges should be brought. Although the special counsel will not be subject to the day-to-day -day supervision of any official of the department, he must comply with the regulations, procedures, and policies of the department. I will ensure that the special counsel receives the resources to conduct this work quickly and completely. Given the work to date and Mr. Smith's prosecutorial experience, I am confident that this appointment will not slow the completion of these investigations. The men and women who are pursuing these investigations are conducting themselves in accordance with the highest standards of professionalism. I could not be prouder of them. I strongly believe that the normal processes of this department can handle all investigations with integrity. And I also believe that appointing a special counsel at this time is the right thing to do. The extraordinary circumstances presented here demand it. Mr. Smith is the right choice to complete these matters in an even-handed and urgent manner. Thank you all. That is the Attorney General of the United States, Merrick Garland, announcing the appointment of a special counsel. He said this has happened before in U.S. history under certain extraordinary cases. Any investigation that might lead to criminal charges against a former president of the United States would undoubtedly qualify as an extraordinary case. Our senior investigative correspondent, Catherine Herridge, before the Attorney General walked out, you mentioned special counsels are appointed when there are concerns right. about conflict of interest. The Attorney General hit that hard. What did you hear, Catherine? I thought it was very significant, Major, that he really made the argument with real clarity as to why he felt a special counsel was warranted under these conditions. He cited the recent announcement by former President Trump that he will seek the Republican nomination for 2024, and then also President Biden's intent to run again in 2024. And in his view, these two provide the appearance of a conflict of interest. And it seems the timing this week of the former president's announcement really was the deciding factor. I want to go down to Jeff Pegues, our chief national affairs and justice correspondent in the room that the attorney general just left. Jeff, your thoughts? Yeah, we'd heard over the last couple of weeks that there had been deliberations about whether to appoint a special counsel. And here you have it, as Catherine pointed out, that move this past week by the former president to throw his hat into the ring accelerated the things here at the Department of Justice. You heard the attorney general also say that the current president is intent on running, even though 
uh, President Biden is not officially thrown in, thrown his hat in the ring. But obviously, this is a move that takes it out of the hands of the attorney general, who has been under pressure, not only from Republicans, but also from Democrats who wanted swifter action against the former president. So we'll have to see where this goes with this seasoned prosecutor. He's someone who is not a household name, but he certainly will be after handling these cases major. Jeff, you have pressed the attorney general on more than one occasion about the idea that a former president might be indicted. This now mm -hmm. appears to be a move, if not in that direction, one where that question and the seriousness around it will be explored even further. Yeah, these are weighty issues. I think sometimes people forget that. But what we're talking about here is, is history, the potential of actually charging a former president of the United States. You just don't see that in this democracy. And so there are weighty legal issues. I've asked the attorney general about this over and over again. And each time he answers the question the same way. No one is above the law. But in this case, he will not be making that decision. It'll be this new special counsel who starts his job right away. In the room where that news just happened, Jeff Pegues, I want to go now to our senior White House and political correspondent, Ed O'Keefe. Ed, the first question on everyone's mind, what does the White House know? The White House did not know about this in advance. From the most junior press staffers closest to where we work to more senior aides deeper back in the West Wing, they insist there was no heads up given. They had no warning. And that is in keeping with a policy that's been in place since the beginning of the Biden administration. They made clear that Attorney General Garland and the Justice Department would handle these things and there would be no coordination or heads up given to White House officials. Important to point that out. And while they're preparing politically to take on former President Trump, the reason those church and state walls are in place is exactly for moments like this, so that there be no question about the potential White House interference in these ongoing investigations. Important to note that. Also notable that the Attorney General made clear part of the reason he's doing this, Jeff and Catherine have mentioned it, is because President Biden has signaled an intent to run for president. We should point out he hasn't made that decision yet formally, expected to come at some point either later this year or early next year. But of course, a big factor because the Attorney General could be summoned to the Oval Office for some other unrelated legal or national security reason at any time, and you'd want to remove any chance of meddling by either their side. Major. And Ed, would you anticipate any pushback even at the margins from the White House about this declaration from the attorney general that in all likelihood the president will seek re-election? You mean that, that they would not dispute his decision to, to make this decision because uh, because th th for, for that very reason, they, they allowed him to have full discretion and full oversight of these matters and, and they won't question them. I want to go now to Scott McFarlane, our congressional correspondent. Scott, the timing of this matters in terms of Capitol Hill. One majority in the House is about to expire. A new majority will come in. What do you think this means in terms of the view from the House majority outgoing and House majority incoming? Yeah, Major, the timing is imperative. I've spoken to a number of congressional sources, none of whom were shocked by this news, but all of whom underscored something important. This could insulate the attorney general from being called in front of this new Republican House majority and having to answer questions about the Mar-a-Lago probe or January 6th. This new Republican majority says they're going to investigate the Department of Justice. Now Merrick Garland may be at least partially inoculated from being called before cameras and answering their questions. Scott McFarland, thank you. With my thanks to Catherine Harridge, Jeff Begays, and Ed O'Keefe. Our coverage will continue on CBS News streaming your local news and tonight on the CBS Evening News. This has been a CBS News special report. I'm Major Garrett in Washington. Good day. We've been watching a CBS News special report. Attorney General Merrick Garland is appointing a special counsel connected to election interference and the Mar-a-Lago investigation. We have a team of contributors and reporters following these developments. Let's begin with our CBS News legal contributor, Jessica Levinson, joining us now. Um, Jessica, we heard from the attorney general. We heard him talk about the circumstances leading up to this point. Um, what's your reaction to what we just heard? My reaction is that this is an attorney general who still very much believes in and wants to resurrect other people's belief in the rule of law, the independence of the Department of Justice. He was very clear about why he thinks this is necessary. And I think he knows that there will be criticism where the question is basically, 
is this helping or hurting the Department of Justice? Does it make it look like they can't reach beyond politics, that they have to remove this investigation and give it to somebody else? Or is it an acknowledgement that removing this from the Department of Justice, where again, the Attorney General is appointed by the President, who may again be a candidate, is that just an acknowledgement that you don't want even the appearance of impropriety? I thought he was very clear on why he thinks this is necessary, very clear on the scope of the investigation. And as we talked about before the announcement, it really does feel just inescapable that this is an acknowledgement that there are very real live issues in both investigations and that it is not at all beyond the realm of possibility that we could see an indictment in one or both of these investigations. A little bit of news that Attorney General Merrick Garland at least believes and has been told and thinks that President Biden will run for re-election. And again, that in part explains his decision here because he thinks it could be President Biden's attorney general leading an investigation against former President Donald Trump. And I think, again, that's why he said, OK, let's appoint a special counsel. So that that essentially answers the why mm -hmm. to tell us more about the who is CBS News chief national affairs and justice correspondent Jeff Begay's. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, I, I, I know this was this is breaking news now, but, you know, we 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 want to know who Jack Smith is. And he has an extensive <laughs> record uh, in the legal arena, but isn't even in this country as we speak, according to reports. What more can you tell us? Yeah, he is, at this time, we're told, traveling back from The Hague, where he has been investigating war crimes, and he is a seasoned prosecutor, no question about that. But the question of who is he, besides the headlines in his uh, CV, his resume, uh, that's what we're about to find out. He is not a household name. He is not someone that people around this country know. And so he has been thrust onto the national scene uh, in this very high profile case. Uh, so his world, not only the legal one, but his personal life will change as well because there's gonna be so much attention on him over the next several months as he investigates and makes decisions in these cases. And so his name, uh, he is, he is uh, a prosecutor who, uh, who has worked in Manhattan. He's worked in the Manhattan DA's office prosecuting sex crimes. Um, so he is someone who uh, we will get to know fairly quickly, and he's going to be the type of person who will be trying to avoid the cameras, but that's almost impossible when you're dealing with a case that involves the former president of the United States and this very weighty question about whether you are going to charge him. You heard the attorney general earlier talking about uh, potential uh, obstruction charges in a case like that this and and so whether you have those charges actually brought against a former president that is the question that the seasoned prosecutor now special counsel will have to decide and jeff as someone who has covered this justice department for some time i wonder if you could just give us a sense of how much pressure merrick mm. garland was facing and the factors weighing uh, into this decision. We heard the attorney general himself talk about the fact that, of course, the timing uh, was certainly something to note, that it is uh, notable that former President Trump announced he is running uh, in 2024. Mm -hmm. What kind of scrutiny and pressure on this particular Justice Department have there been? Well, it, this attorney general has been uh, under scrutiny really since the day he was confirmed and took office here because there was this perception that the former attorney general and the former Department of Justice under President Trump was too politicized. And so Merrick Garland, who, as you know, for most of his career has been a judge, his goal has been to sort of remove the Department of Justice from that perception of being uh, politicized. And so everything he has done uh, has been along those lines. And I think sometimes people forget this is someone who is not a politician. Sometimes you have attorney generals coming from Congress, 
but he is not a politician. You can tell that in the way that he answers questions, in the way that he relates to the media, but also in the way that he looks at the law. He is someone who has been asked many times some of those questions, many of those questions from me, mm -hmm. about this very serious question, you know, to, to, to have the courage to bring charges against a former president. This is something that uh, no one would take lightly, but it was dropped into his lap with all of these investigations, whether it's the January 6th investigation or the classified records case. Uh, so these are very weighty decisions, and Attorney General uh, Garland uh, has come at these cases uh, in terms of how do the laws of the land apply to these alleged violations? He, again, he is a judge, he's not a politician, and I think this decision to bring in a special counsel uh, is really true to form for him, because if you look at how all of this developed over the last a uh, couple of weeks, it really seemed to accelerate. You know, there was this flurry of activity after the search of Mar-a-Lago, but then the special master was brought in. Uh, that kind of slowed things down. We'd heard uh, talk over the last couple of months that former President Trump was going to throw his hat into the ring, the thinking being that this could disrupt, or that idea of declaring uh, yourself a candidate for president could disrupt or even derail uh, investigations like these. But this move by the attorney general, it certainly uh, clears the way uh, for this special counsel to be buffeted a little from some of the politics. He, he will now get the, the brunt of the scrutiny, and it really buffets the attorney general from the politics. Uh, but it is a way of maintaining the credibility of the case, especially uh, in the eyes of someone who has spent most of his career as a judge, and of course I'm referring to Merrick Garland. All right, Jeff Begays, I know you have to get going. Jeff, thank you so much. Let's bring in CBS News senior White House and political correspondent Ed O'Keefe joining us now from the White House. And Ed, we had seen President Biden in an event just before Merrick Garland's announcement. Um, it was a pre-scheduled event with business leaders talking about inflation and the economy. Somebody then, seemed to get to get a tip. Well, and then he got asked a question, did not have an answer. So <laughs> what do we know, Ed, about the behind the scenes? Did the president know? Did they have a heads up that this was coming? We have asked uh, multiple aides here at the White House whether there was any heads up given by the Justice Department, and the answer is no. Mm -hmm. uh, that is in keeping with a policy that's been in place since the beginning of the Biden administration that all matters related to the former president and most other Justice Department matters were going to be handled by the Justice Department and their teams, and that there would be no formal heads up given to the White House on these kinds of matters, because you don't want to from a legal perspective, you don't also want to now for a political or PR perspective so that the accusations that perhaps the White House is meddling can be removed entirely. Uh, so from the most junior aides that sit closest to us to others uh, further back in the building and who work in the administration, uh, it was pretty clear they did not know about this ahead of the news reports that surfaced. Um, and I thought it was notable that you heard the attorney general there say, because the former president has announced he's running again and because the current president has signaled an intent to run again. He wanted to remove himself from any uh, involvement with this, uh, with this ongoing case. Remember, former, sorry, current President Biden has not formally launched a 2024 re-election bid, but he has said in interviews, he has said in other public statements that he is uh, preparing or anticipating a run. He just has to have some more conversations with his family about it. We anticipate a potential formal announcement later this year or early next year. So if you're the attorney general, as Jeff was laying out, a non-political figure, mm -hmm. you want to remove yourself from all accusations of bias uh, or political favoritism or accusation that President Biden's attorney general is forcing the former president to be put, uh, put through this criminal process. Um, and, and so, you know, th this will allow that to go on. But have Garland, in essence, be able to continue dealing with the White House in whatever way he might have to and not face any questions about whether he discussed this with the president or other senior officials since he's not the one making the decision. For yeah. example, I can remember a few weeks ago there was a cabinet meeting and the way the cabinet table is set up in the cabinet room, the attorney general sits right across from the president. So, you know, what's to say that at the end of that meeting somebody couldn't accuse him of maybe sticking around and discussing these things? No. 
That's not what's happening. That's not what's designed to happen now, given this decision, because he can't do that. He has no information on it other than, as he said, to provide all the resources that the new special counsel will need to make his determination. And just to be clear, Ed, the reference to the tip was for the reporter and not certainly the, the, uh, the Biden president, uh, President Biden, I should say. Um, thank you for that. Um, CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane is also on uh, with us at this time. Republicans flipped the House in the midterms. Um, did the DOG, DOJ rather feel like it needed to act more quickly because, because of that? I think the timing is imperative here. The attorney general didn't mention that as one of the reasons or the criteria for his decision, but it's clearly important. We're hearing that from our congressional sources. With the Republicans poised to take control of the U.S. House January 3rd and with the Republicans promising a robust investigation into this Justice Department, Merrick Garland may have inoculated himself. He may have made it less likely he is called to testify before those panels and answer questions about Mar-a-Lago or the January 6 probes. Garland can now simply say, I've appointed a special counsel. Those questions are better directed towards Jack Smith. It takes some of the arrows out of the quiver of a House majority Republican Party that has made unambiguous this is going to be among their first priorities to investigate the Department of Justice, including its handling of January 6 matters. So the timing is important here. Even if it wasn't part of the criteria or the rationale, there's a real world impact, not just for the Department of Justice, but for the attorney general himself. All right, Scott, thank you. For more on this, let's bring in CBS News Homeland Security and Justice reporter Nicole Skanga now. Uh, Nicole, welcome. So have we seen a situation like this happen before? Elaine, good to be with you. Now, Garland's appointment, as we've been pointing out, a way of sort of shielding him from potential conflict of interest or appearance of that. And this is pretty novel, right? We are talking about potential criminal charges uh, waged against a former president of the United States, who, by the way, earlier this week, as we've been talking about, also uh, put his uh, hat in the ring as a potential contender for 2024. You know, at the same time, this is what a special counsel was designed to do right. Special counsels are semi-independent prosecutors. They're appointed to oversee high-level investigations, where, again, you know, it could be sticky for a current attorney general. Now, we should point out that Mr. Trump is no stranger to special counsel investigations. He came under scrutiny during his administration uh, under special counsel Robert Mueller, who, of course, investigated links between his 2016 campaign and Russia. But there are some differences. For instance, during uh, this, the Mueller investigation, uh, former President Trump was in office. And while it was more challenging, or it is more challenging, for a special counsel to be fired by a sitting president, that was still on the table, and that created some tension between the Justice Department and the White House at the time. Also, we should point out that as opposed to that investigation, you know, the criminal investigations that we are talking about right now into the events leading up to January 6th and the handling of classified documents have been ongoing. There's a lot of investigative work that has already been performed now by federal authorities. So the question becomes how much new uh, investigative work will Jack Smith do and his team move? forward, or will he rely on much of what federal prosecutors have already dug up? You know, I, I have to ask, a number of people have, have questioned the motive behind uh, former President Donald Trump's entry into the race, uh, being that his candidacy might shield him in some respect. He has, the, you know, the, not necessarily the bully pulpit, but, but um, Rebecca, I, I just have to ask, you know, how much of a factor was the decision with him entering the race and the sort of like swing of, of these two things happening all at once? So I don't know. I don't know um, how much of it factored into his decision. But as you said, it's certainly true that the um, timing makes it such that this announcement um, it doesn't shield him, but it gives him more bows in his quiver, right? He can argue now that any effort to go after him for January 6th is an effort to destroy a political rival who's posing a threat to the sitting president who wants to run a second time. And so, you know, I, it has to have 
factored in on some level into the strategic decision to make his announcement now. And um, as you're speaking, Rebecca, I see that we've just received a <coughs> statement um, from the special counsel. Okay. Nicole, if you're still with us, I wonder if you have that to share with us. Jack Smith is a name that was not familiar necessarily um, to many people. In fact, uh, as we heard the attorney general himself lay out, uh, this is someone who has experience in many arenas, including oh, yes. prosecuting war crimes. And so he's on his way back. Um, Jessica, if you are with us, um, I'm told you're, you're there, Jessica Levinson, our CBS News um, legal contributor. We see this statement now from the special counsel saying, quote, I intend to conduct the assigned investigations and any prosecutions that may result from them independently and in the best traditions of the Department of Justice. The pace of the investigations will not pause or flag under my watch. I will exercise independent judgment and will move the investigations forward expeditiously and thoroughly to whatever outcome the facts and the law dictate. You talked about this earlier. What does this move by the attorney general now appointing the special counsel suggest about Merrick Garland's belief in the strength of its developing investigations on both these fronts. Well, and what's interesting in that statement is, of course, the word independent. And we saw that explicitly, and we see that in other ways in the statement, saying over and over again, I am not going to answer to anybody. This is not going to be a political calculation. This will be a situation, and I think he said it word for word, where the facts and the law dictate my decision here. What does it indicate about the investigations? We did touch on this before where it just escapes common sense to think that this is anything other than a statement that the investigations are ongoing, that they're very live, and that they could potentially lead to criminal charges. If these investigations are really largely winding down, if there's no chance that there could be an indictment, then I'm not sure that you have the same need for a special counsel. Again, to look at both the Mar-a-Lago case dealing with the retention of documents and the January 6th investigation dealing with thwarting the peaceful transfer of power. So again, I think it really indicates to us that the special counsel has a lot of work to do, meaning there are still facts that they're looking at, there's still witnesses that they're investigating, and that there is a very real chance, not at all a guarantee, but a very real chance that there could be an indictment in one or both of these cases. I want to go to uh, CBS News legal contributor Rebecca Rofi, who joins us now. Uh, you're a former prosecutor. We know former President Trump has been a target of the investigation. Uh, who else could be implicated in all of this? You know, I think there was a big question mark at the end of the January 6 hearings about who else might have been involved in certain decisions that were made and uh, how they were involved. And the question mark came from the fact that many of them did not testify, either were not subpoenaed, but for the most part uh, chose not to testify before Congress. And so uh, I think there are two sets of people, really, advisors like Roger Stone and Steve Bannon. How involved were they? Did they were there any connections between the pro protesters who turned violent that day and those individuals and then connections between those individuals and the former president. And another question that really interests me is the lawyers, because um, lingering in the background of this story is Rudy Giuliani, who is working hard on the elector scheme, um, John Eastman, who was his lawyer who appeared at that rally and also um, interacted with, uh, with the um, vice president's aide, and how much was he involved? and whether there are any, there's any cr criminal exposure for him. And finally, there was Jeffrey Clark, who was the attorney at the Department of Justice, who, um, if you remember, was sort of poised to take over and do the president's bidding in terms of suggesting that there was a case about election fraud when there was absolutely no facts or no facts to support that. So I think those are a set of people that could be caught in the dragnet. I think it's hard to know because, of course, um, you know, there are facts we just don't know. You you know, connections that were impossible to make despite the very extensive amount of evidence that was developed during those hearings. All right, Ed O'Keefe, if you're still with us, our CBS News senior White House and political correspondent, what's next here for the president? When is the next time that reporters will be able to get a chance to ask either him questions or his staff questions, given this latest development? Well, there's a White House news briefing scheduled for about 36 minutes from now. 
so we'll certainly ask there, mm -hmm. and we'll get further clarification, at least on the record, about what, if anything, they knew in advance. But again, we've been told here at CBS News they got no formal heads up. Uh, there may be questions again about does the Attorney General know something we don't regarding the President's political future, but mm -hmm. again, he has said publicly he's anticipating a re-election race, so it, that's not a surprise. Um, and beyond that, uh, they're getting ready here at the White House, frankly, for his granddaughter's wedding tomorrow, mm -hmm. Naomi, Naomi Biden, the daughter of Hunter Biden, uh, getting married on the South Lawn tomorrow afternoon, and then, of course, the President's birthday is on Sunday. So in some respects, their, their focus and their headspace is in other places, uh, and that's by design. Again, this is a White House that, from the beginning, has made very clear Justice Department, legal matters of whatever sort are handled by the Justice Department, and there's not to be any communication or coordination between the West Wing and the Justice Department on these kinds of cases. And that appears to be, from our first uh, pass at asking people what went on here today, that there was no heads up given, at least that's what they tell us. Uh, but that's also been by design, and there's been no evidence at all over the course of the last nearly two years that in these instances uh, any kind of heads up is given in advance. Uh, and and that, that was the instructions or that was the mandate that Attorney General Garland was given from the start. You go do your thing, we'll do ours over here, and uh, we'll keep the, the you know, face to face conversation between you and the President at a minimum, given that this day and some days that may be coming uh, seemed inevitable. Well, as is often has been hap as often has been happening uh, over the last several months. Big news dropping on a Friday afternoon. Right. <laughs> um, uh, the fact that uh, Merrick Garland, our Attorney General, has assigned a special counsel to investigate big uh, yeah. two big cases before the Justice Department. We want to thank Ed O'Keefe. Uh, Jeff Pegues, Nicole Senega, uh, Rebecca R Rofi, Jessica Levinson, Scott McFarlane, a host of people yes, who are uh, watching this story. for us. Yes. Uh, it is breaking news, and it's certainly happening right here on CBS News. Stay with, Stay us. with us. Original CBS Reports documentary. Yoga and wellness has become a place of anti science. Online clickbait. The algorithms feed you content based upon your own fantasy. Potentially at my peril. There's no question about it. Spreading digital disinformation. Their entire yoga studio and spiritual community got so embedded in all of the QAnon stuff that it became a sick place. Why pro health people are fertile ground for anti science messages. We can just go into the whole mask thing. A lot of us just believe that symbolism for silencing people. People are locked in this mindset. They've been taught to accept what the medical doctors say. No longer are you going to be willing to take any medical advice. It's a big problem that we urgently need to address. An original CBS Reports documentary streaming now. An original CBS Reports documentary. We need to put an end to this territorial status. Will statehood create a better Puerto Rico? So that we have the same quality of life that you see in the States. What do you worry about? Me living here in the future. They're giving incentives to non-Puerto Ricans to come to Puerto Rico. And extract our natural resources and take over our land. Vacation in Puerto Rico, and in exchange for that, you don't pay taxes. Why would I allow somebody who abused me for 123 years to then consume me? An original CBS Reports documentary, streaming now. When weather turns extreme. Massive and rapidly intensifying hurricane. Every second counts. Hurricane Fiona slams Puerto Rico with flooding and power outages. CBS News and the Weather Channel bring you virtual weather technology so advanced, so real. Well over nine feet. This is not survivable. You'll have time to get prepared. You want to have the advantage on severe weather days. It just may save your life. Feel the forecast. Weather when it matters most on CBS Mornings. People from every corner of America facing challenges. Everyone is just looking for some type of connection. Just raise your hand and say, hey, I'd like to help. Coming together to find solutions. We are going to do something about it. Their stories are our stories. Welcome to Eye on America. Stream now on the free CBS News app. We are so excited, we just can't hide it. 
CBS mornings are, well, everything your morning should be. Let's do it! Let's go! CBS mornings, starting at 7. Stories that inform, inspire, and brighten your day. I've been waiting patiently for something like this. Make every day a little more like Sunday morning. Here comes the sun. Stream on the free CBS News app Tuesday mornings. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us here on CBS News. I'm Michelle Miller. And I'm Elaine Quijano. We continue to follow breaking news from Washington, where Attorney General Merrick Garland has appointed a special prosecutor to oversee Trump-related, a special counsel, rather, to oversee Trump-related investigations. Garland says Attorney Jack Smith will investigate whether Trump will be charged in connection with the January 6th insurrection. He will also investigate the discovery of classified documents at the former president's South Florida estate. Attorney General Garland shared insight into what led him to appoint a special counsel. The Department of Justice has long recognized that in certain extraordinary cases, it is in the public interest to appoint a special prosecutor to independently manage an investigation and prosecution. Based on recent developments, including the former president's announcement that he is a candidate for president in the next election and the sitting president's stated intention to be a candidate as well, I have concluded that it is in the public interest to appoint a special counsel. We have a team of contributors and reporters following this, these developments. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland joins us now. Uh, Scott, let's start with you. So Republicans flipped the House in the midterms. Did the DOJ feel like it needed to act more quickly because of that? Attorney General Garland did not mention that as one of his reasons, part of his rationale for naming the special counsel, but it's an important piece to this puzzle. Republicans take control of the U.S. House January 3rd, and as a matter of principle, um, that's noteworthy. But as a matter of practicality, it's especially noteworthy because the House Republicans have made clear they intend to investigate the U.S. Justice Department, including its handling of January 6 matters. Attorney General Garland has at least partially insulated himself from being called before the Republicans in the House, being sworn in and answering questions about January 6th or about the Mar-a-Lago investigations. He can now say emphatically that he has appointed a special counsel to handle those matters and that he has now absolved himself of having to talk about them. That's a very important practical implication. But something else is really landing with me. As we heard what the attorney general said in processing how people are reacting to it, what a historic moment this is. I know we've been in this news cycle for two years, nearly two years since January 6th. But what's just happened is the attorney general of the United States has appointed a special counsel, Jack Smith, to investigate if anyone or any entity tried to block the peaceful transfer of power in America. This is a unique moment. This is unique in American history. It's happening today. And I wanted to underscore that because I'm getting that sense from the people I talked to in Congress. They're saying, we, did, we saw this coming. This isn't a surprise. But can you believe what has just happened? A remarkable moment. We want to go now to CBS News senior White House and political correspondent Ed O'Keefe. Uh, uh, the last uh, special prosecutor was um, the you know Robert Mueller, Robert Mueller yeah. who essentially um, took his time going through uh, an investigation of, of the Trump White House. Um, why will this be different? Well, and there was also the the Durham investigation that was led uh, to look into all the matters related to the FBI and Hillary Clinton. It was a far more low profile example, but another example of a special prosecutor being appointed. Um, why this will be different, obviously, is because you are investigating potential criminal charges against a former president who's running for president, while the current president is the boss of the attorney general who appointed the special prosecutor. You can see the mix of political and legal mess there that this creates. So the attorney general has the discretion to prop up somebody else to take on a sensitive, extraordinary matter like this one, and this certainly is that, um, and basically hand it over to that person to make any and all related decisions about whether to proceed with potential criminal prosecution. It frees up the attorney general, and we've talked about this a little earlier, in the congressional space, in the legal space, in the public relations space, and frankly, in the everyday running the Justice Department being attorney general space, to remove himself from this, to not face questions about the details of it and what he knew and when he knew it and who he talked about it with, 
because the Attorney General can get dragged into other related matters or unrelated matters uh, that require talking to the President uh, and other officials that might, you know, put him in a sensitive spot when it comes to this ongoing investigation as well. So perhaps no surprise, it's coming now after the election, after the balance of power has been determined, um, after the president, the current one, has signaled that he is thinking about running again, uh, that the Justice Department now planning to move ahead with determining whether or not to prosecute the former president. And in the statement from Jack Smith, he makes clear this doesn't slow anything down. They will continue to move forward with this expeditiously. That's to the benefit or the potential problem for the former president, but also, frankly, for the country, which has been waiting uh, to see where this would go and what it might mean next uh, as the political process going into 2024 also gets underway. So a big moment, one that we knew there would be a crossroads for soon after the election because the Justice Department doesn't do these things too close to an election, but certainly can wait and respond to something after an election. Uh, and now we have a sense of where Justice Department will move next in terms of sorting out what to do about all the investigations into the former president, the federal ones. All right, Ed, thank you. And CBS News legal contributor Jessica Levinson joins us now as well. So, Jessica, tell us about this special counsel. He has a lot of experience uh, at the federal level, experience with corruption cases in particular. I thought that was one of the more interesting aspects of his resume. Obviously, he's a former federal prosecutor, and that's something that we could have predicted. He also has worked on the International Criminal Court. And what's interesting to me is that he has both experience when it comes to political corruption charges and investigations, and also with respect to investigating and potentially trying former um, heads of state. So he does have as close as you possibly can experience in these areas. Now, of course, he's not going to do these investigations by himself. He has a team of other federal prosecutors and investigators who will assist him in looking at all of the potential federal charges in this case. But what really stood out to me, that experience with respect to former federal, or excuse me, former foreign officials, even heads of state, and that experience dealing with public corruption and public integrity. In fact, he's been um, overseas for the last, appears, almost five years uh, mm -hmm. in, in that capacity. Uh, for more on this, thank you so much, uh, Jessica. For more on uh, this, we want to bring in uh, CBS News Homeland Security uh, and Justice reporter Nicole Skanga. Uh, Nicole, welcome. Um, the, the former president is reacting to the news now we're being told, what exactly is he saying? Yeah, so we are starting to hear from the former president's team, a spokesperson for Mr. Trump saying, quote, this is a totally expected political stunt by a feckless, politicized, weaponized Biden Department of Justice. Uh, now, this is not a massive surprise. We have, of course, heard the former president refer to uh, previous and ongoing investigations into potential criminal behavior as a witch hunt. But we should also point out, uh, you know, as Ed has, as Scott has, and others, that this special counsel appointment is, in fact, a way for the attorney general to distance him himself from potential politicization. And he even pointed out today during his remarks at the Department of Justice that part of his decision to appoint a special counsel is tied to the timing of all of this, to the former president announcing uh, his bid for 2024, uh, to the potential for uh, the current president, President Joe Biden, to run again. Uh, Garland saying that, you know, he's made indications that he will most likely run. And so we should expect to hear more uh, from the former president along these lines. But again, impo important to point out to our viewers that part of the reason the special counsel here was appointed is, in fact, to counter claims of, you know, turning uh, investigations, criminal investigations into the former president, into some sort of, you know, politics circus, particularly with the House swinging from Democrat to Republican. All right, uh, CBS News legal contributor Rebecca Royfe joins us now as well. She's a former uh, prosecutor. Um, do we have Rebecca? Um, all right, unclear if we have Rebecca, but there she there is. There she is. So we know former President Trump has been a target of the investigation. Rebecca, who else could be implicated in all of this? 
Well, you know, there were a number of people who were potentially a part of his inner circle leading up to January 6th and on January 6th. There are a set of advisors, Roger Stone, Steve Bannon. Um, and then, very interestingly, I think there are a number of lawyers who played a role in his efforts during that period of time. And whether or not those efforts were criminal, it's hard to tell. But if they were, it would seem likely that they would be caught up in um, a potential conspiracy. Rudy Giuliani, John, who was actually a speaker at the uh, rally on January 6th. And then finally, um, there was Jeff Clark, who was the Department of Justice lawyer who was poised to take over and do the president's bidding, apparently, in relating to U.S. attorney's offices um, that they had found evidence of election fraud, even though they had not, or that they were investigating evidence of election fraud, even though they were not. And while that did not work out as the former president wanted it to, it is possible that he too could be in, um, included in this um, circle if there are ultimately any criminal charges that are brought. All right. Thank you, Rebecca Royfe. Um, I, I want to go back to uh, our congressional correspondent, Scott McFarland. Uh, this has truly been an extraordinary Friday, uh, one that Fridays mm. often have become uh, the, the news dump they of a uh, of record. Uh, but, but what are your final thoughts about all of this happening? Uh, first, the bigger picture. In the past 48 hours, two pieces of history. Nancy Pelosi departing as House leader for Democrats after a historic tenure. And today, a special counseled investigation into the actions of January 6th and the FBI search of a former president's home in Mar-a-Lago. Let's put that foundation out there. But here's the bottom line moving forward. The special counsel in his statement says he will not change the speed or trajectory or the pace of these investigations. And some of this will be transparent, though he's not going to be giving public reports and updates on his investigations if and when he files paperwork in the federal courts to seek a search warrant to file charges against someone, some place in connection with these investigations, those will be public record. He will put his name on them and his signature on them. There will be some transparency. So not all of this will operate beneath a cone of silence. We'll be able to track it. But here's the thing. There is no timetable, no deadline for this. It could be a matter of months. It could be a matter of years, as past special counsels have shown. We'll find out how fast he moves as those papers come in. All right, an extraordinary day. Scott McFarland, Ed O'Keefe, Nicole Skanga, Rebecca Royfe, and Jessica Levinson, thanks to you all. The National Weather Service is forecasting, quote, historic snowfall in western New York. People from Buffalo to Rochester could be in store for more than four feet of snow. Snow began to uh, fall yesterday and will persist through the day. Forecasters say it could damage infrastructure and even, quote, paralyze the community's hardest hit by the storm. The mayor of Buffalo said today a driving ban has been reimposed across the